Okay, basically I'm gonna take and show you how to do this little bit of stuff on this finger. Just so you get the idea of what it can look like. And then starting off with your single subject. Okay, let's start. And first off, we're gonna start with the latex. Okay, and then it's just open it up and pour it in. Sometimes I like to dip it on for faster applications and you get a whole lot more. Put your latex on, you grab your piece of toilet paper, and you wrap it around. Simple enough? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's it. You want to add another layer of your latex. Not too much. The next thing you know, it's all over the place and you got stuff sticking everywhere. Only do as much as you need because, hey, these products cost a little bit of money. You need to make sure it's really good and totally sealed because you start painting, toilet paper comes off, and there goes your whole effect and all that time you wasted. You're gonna go ahead and let that dry. That's where the hair dryer comes in. Because you're gonna need to put another layer. Just to see it. You can always add as many layers of latex as you want and toilet paper for the bigger or fatter or swollen or however effect. Mainly what I was doing was I have this one covered, this one covered, these three will be covered as far as bruised or broken nails, depending on what you want. If you do have the money to make cheap nails and have them look brittle, fine. But what I'm going for is a total no nail. So of course, you set and you let the next layer dry. Make sure that you want to tap to give some kind of dimension like these. You just want to put on latex and be like, oh wow, and I got a fat finger with no nail. No, you want that texture, you want that prettiness, you want the vein looking. Because later on when you add the paint, it gives you some kind of depth as you can see in these. Or maybe can't. So you let that dry again. You can use your air dryer or just give it a minute or so. You want to do a final tack. Make sure everybody's sealed in. Yes, as long as everybody's sealed in, everything's sealed in, you're good. It, ain't, it will not come off unless you really do something horrible or start dipping it in water. Dipping in water, I don't know what to tell you. You're going to have to do it all over again. Good luck with that. So, you get it nice and good and sealed and let it dry. Close up your latex for the fact that it will dry fast. Okay. Super bloody gory because believe me, the less paint the better. Because the more you have, the more it's going to cake, the more it will come off when you're doing stuff on film. And you know, why the heck is that my, you got paint on his face? Or why does he have paint here? It's because you're rubbing it off because it's caked on. So, to stop that, you can grab one of these sponges. Pat, pat, pat. Wipe, wipe, wipe. Okay, and you got your first layer on. I know I don't have it on here to show you, but... told 
by a very great teacher. That you can make a film for yourself, or you can make a film for everybody else. I prefer to make a little of both. Get what I want, and at the same time, give people what they need to. That lovely gore. And then there's the sissies that don't like too much gore. I prefer a crap load of gore. Okay. You get the little bit in there, and it's looking okay. Yeah. So, you want to add a little black. Definitely not everywhere because then you got is a green black smudge paint. So always if you don't like it, you always can sponge off. If you like pet. I prefer another brush, another technique, which is this. You just go up and down. It wipes and spreads and wipes and spreads. Okay. So so far, looking good. Now we're going to go with a little bit of blue for the things that burned all up. So you dab yourself some on, dab it, dab it. Wipe the excess off that you don't need because believe me, with the blue you only need the tiny bit for the effect. Do that, you want to add some of your tower. Sorry, this is the kind I like. It's a wound tower. Uh, you just want to apply it here and there just to give it that still flesh is somewhere in there look or many of the reasons that probably people use it that's basically what I'm going for this desired effect like I said it's all about really what you want okay so far it's looking a little light so you definitely want to go in and add your other colors, your darker, deeper colors. You need some tan in there. You need some background. Foreground. You need it all. You need that 3D effect. Okay. Now we want to go inside the wound. So you want to get this red. It's a lovely red. You take your paintbrush. You dip it inside. Get a good amount on there because you want it shoved in to your wound. Not so bloody yet, but believe me, we'll add extra effects, extra makeup actually, not effects. You take a little of your black. You add the highlight. You want it to barely show just that enough of shadow, basically. See, rotted blood. Whoa. Really, really want more red. I prefer adding blood. The paint is fine, but once you're on set, you're gonna have tons of blood usually anyway. Well, it all depends on how much gore you care. So, you get this nice little effect here going. Got your open wound, but now you want to add the blood. Remember, you always want to get deep into these wounds because this stuff you want to pet. Alright. Pat. 
Okay. And then for one last creepy gore. He add the extra drippy blood. Ooh, the open wound effect. Okay, now I'm gonna show you what I will be using this for basically. So basically what's gonna happen is this is for my subject and I have him wearing a glove. So that's where most of the detail. You see the little scars in there. Man, looks all creepy. And there's your open wound. There's more blood. This is when I like this spray blood. You wipe it down. Don't mind covering the glove because it gives it a better effect if you got your glove bloody as hell too. So, you got your creepy blood effect. Okay, well I hope I helped you out in some sort of way. If I didn't, I'm sorry I wasted your time.